And it ended up turning into a blizzard and uh, a tornado. <laughs> 17 hours later. Yeah, 17 hours later. Can't get in the cabins. The doors were broken. Uh, you know, renting hotels. So yeah, it uh, turned into quite a journey. Um, and even for us, you know, we left at 2:30. And uh, we made it up without much traffic. We made it up to uh, Sacramento. Got up to, you know, on the way up pretty close. And then from then on, it was a, it was a journey. Uh, uh, yeah, but I'm just proud of you guys for sticking it out. I kept, I had to encourage my car because uh, every hour or two, I'd get a text from the car in front of us. Uh, Let's turn back. <laughs> no! No! <laughs> Uh, and you know, and, and Samuel was t calling us. You guys probably just go back, you know, get a hotel. <laughs> and uh, but we weren't having it. And I said, "Head for the no, we're going." <laughs> um, so we, we stuck it out. So I'm proud of uh, you know everybody who, who did that. It was pretty wild. Uh, but Javier wanted to just talk a little bit about his journey really quick, <laughs> and then and then I'll finish well, up. Let's hear it. No calling names out, right? <laughs> no, I think, I think this, we can turn this thing out to a positive thing. It, it, it can easily go the wrong way, and we all start being, we start getting negative about it. I know it's not an easy trip by any means. It could have been, but it's just circumstances. So I guess let's make uh, this a positive trip, and you know, it'll be more satisfiable to talk about what happened at year end when you guys do your thing. But um, then, you know, check we chickened out, we went back home. So it'll be a good thing to write home about. And let's do the best, the best trip ever, you know, even though we went through what we went through. But we, if, if we would have known, then we wouldn't come. But, you know, know, it's just like the struggles, <laughs> it will be, nothing in life is easy. And we just go a day at a time, we can plan all we want, but God has different plans and, and things happen. But we can make things work on a very, very, you know, devotional, positive way. So, thank you guys to tough it out. I wanted to go back home, yeah. but we stuck it out and... and, and we're here. We're glad we're here. We're all safe. Yeah. Um, nothing, you know, nothing to, to um, worry about. We got food. We got everything. We got our car. We're warm. So it's it's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. So thank you guys for uh, for sticking it out, and we have a good time and a good safe back home. <laughs> yes. He stopped. He stopped once yes. for us, yes. and that was all that he was gonna do. Uh, but he really, he drove the whole way, he didn't complain, no, and he was just like, <laughs> like a hawk, man, just watching out for the cars. He's high. And so, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, it's super awesome, like, oh gosh, yeah, anyway, so great, thank you so much for keeping us safe, being the driver. He didn't want to let me drive, it was probably for the best. Yeah. Um, and then my other one is for Samuel. Uh, so yes, last night, we did not foresee us having so much snow. Carla and I were out there digging up snow. She came and helped me get out of this pit that I was in. At one point, her little leg, she like jumped like a little bunny to get on the other side. She was trying with her little, you know, little legs. And um, she was out there with me. And it was like 17 degrees out and the wind was going. And Samuel was very proactive. Uh, while we were trying to do that, he was finding hotels for us, and then he got a really good discount. I don't know what he did, but he got an upgrade. There's a gay guy on the counter. <laughs> and he, uh, he got us, he got us, the girls, he gave the girls the bigger room, and the boys the smaller room. So thank you so much for doing that and for the attitude. So thank you guys. It was a really hard night, but you guys made it a lot easier. Okay, somebody else. Jasmine? Oh, I was just going to say that I've never really talked to Brawley before, but then he followed me into the woods. And I feel like this is just a beautiful, beautiful beginning of the beautiful Brawley. The that I had, that I had a, a chance still, I had a second chance to come to God. I think that's my motivation for what I do, and that's what gives me strength to keep studying, and that's what gives me strength to overcome my sin. So I'm just hoping that during this trip that you guys can all 
I'll find what it is that your motivation is. What is your strength that gives you um, the motivation to do what you do and to overcome your sin? Um, so with that being said, I'm going to turn it over to the worship team. And um, I guess they're going to lead us in a, a few songs. There we go. Let's try it. Now is the time to Just, and this is more of a 
us trying to retreat and go back to um, a reminder ourselves or renew those vows that we once pledged to our God. So um, that is our theme and that is what we're hoping for. Um, so I wanted to... So if everybody remembers what Carla was talking about, um, our theme of the night is revival. And uh, the main topic that she brought up was a personal relationship with God apart from your um, daily routine, in a sense, or daily activities that um, some of you guys just got caught into, where it's just church, um, and just these routines that just kind of break that habit and um, have personal connection with God. That was uh, Carla's topic. And uh, my topic is going to be on, okay, um, now that we're actually connected to God, um, He is the vine, and of course we are the branches. And um, here, let me read this verse real quick to make it a little bit more clear. <clears throat> This is Jesus speaking, and he says, I am the vine, and you are the branches. And whoever abides in me, and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. And from, from apart from me, so if you're not connected to Jesus, and you're not connected to the vine, you can do nothing. And this is why we want to emphasize the importance of having a personal relationship and connection with God, because... If you don't have that personal connection with God, then you you basically can't do nothing. You can't produce no fruit, and uh, you're basically a dead branch that's going to um, be put to the fire, in a sense. <laughs> and uh, that, that's, that scares me, so that's why uh, uh, I, I want to connect, or I give my life to God and always be connected to Him. Um, so my main... Um, topic is going to be on pruning and the reason why I, I think about this a lot in my life is because I'm a certified tree worker and that's all I <laughs> well, that's all I do every week is, is prune out the dead and, and just I turn this ugly disease sometimes tree and I, I bring it back to life um, in a sense, just by removing the disease, just by removing the dead, and having um, structural um, balance in the tree, it can be uh, produced a lot more because it still has its roots connected to good soil. And um, that's one thing that I want to emphasize on, is that Jesus is our vine, and that we are the branches, and a lot of us have dead in our lives. And there's no Christian that does not have dead in their lives. It's, it's just the sin that we have in our lives. And that's um, the main thing that I want to touch on real um, No per perfect formula that you yourself have to identify your dead in your life. Like what is stopping you from growing in Christ. Um, everybody's is different. And that's why there's no perfect formula that I can give you guys. So, in a sense, the only way to answer, to identify the dead in your life, is found within yourself. Okay? Um, and one thing that I want to point out is that every branch is going to be cut regardless. This is one thing that I don't think a lot of Christians even take um, into consideration, is that you're going to be cut. If you're dead or even if you're producing fruit, you're going to be cut. I know for me and in, in my profession, when I prune a fruit tree, it produces more fruit. And um, that's how I see God working in our lives. Sometimes we don't like the pruning process that God is doing in our life. God, why'd you remove this person in my life? I loved him, or I loved her, or why did you remove this from my life? I, I enjoy doing that. I love doing that. And it's, it, it hurts us. And sometimes, um, like a tree, we build this, um, for, for me, I, I know what I'm talking about, but like it's just this wall of sap in, in a tree. But in, for our lives, it's like this wall, this barrier that 
no, I'm not going to let this um, hurt me anymore. And you build this kind of wall um, that stops you from growing where God in intended you to grow. And um, that is one important thing that I want to talk about is that the experiences in your guys' life, your experience is going to determine on how you grow, on how you react to the cut. And um, that's one thing that I want to point out is that uh, you can stop the healing process that God has for you, has set for you. Um, by disobedient, disobeying, um, by not being connected at all times, just sometimes, <laughs> um, and you refuse to grow when God has something for you. And um, for me personally, <laughs> I always talk about myself, I know this, but that's because <laughs> That's because um, I believe that uh, my testimony speaks volumes to people because um, I did not grow up in the church and I did not um, grow up in this environment um, of being this holy person. Um, but I'm starting to learn how to. And I had a lot of things cut from my life that I did not want to release. Like my friends, like I had the entire high school as my friend like literally I would walk down the hallway and I would have to shake everybody's hand just because everybody knew me <laughs> and when, when, God, when God started coming in my life literally everybody gone everybody I have probably about three friends in my life right now that have stuck with me to the end and one of them is JC the other one's Julio and the other one is uh, Douglas, who is he's kind of missing right now. <laughs> I texted him just recently, he's alive, so okay. <laughs> but that was something in my life that I never thought that I could lose, is all these people that um, were in my life, in a sense. And there was a lot of things that I enjoyed doing that were cut off of my life that God said, this is not what I have for you. And... Um, I come to the understanding now that yes, everything is hindering me and that everything that was cut off of my life helped me grow in Christ and I've uh, allowed the um, healing process to make me grow instead of just um, stopping the growth.